100 Ways to Disappear and Live Free, originally published in 1972 by Eden Press. On this episode of the Volume Podcast, I re-release a booklet originally published by Eden Press in the year of 1972, sharing the same title as above. The physical booklet, scanned below, was another selection mailed to me by Jim Stum, the man who met Rayo. As can be ascertained, the following are a hundred suggestions to live free, presumably by the author of the paper trip, Barry Reed. It turns out Eden Press is still around, and all of these books are still available, and more. I would highly recommend perusing their website, and making a purchase if the paper tripping path is of interest to you. Please be aware that some of these suggestions might be outdated or otherwise irrelevant, whether due to the vastly different political climate or advancements in surveillance technology. With that said, proceed at your own risk. Of course, no copyright infringement is intended. Please enjoy. 100 Ways to Disappear and Live Free There are four basic principles of libertarian living, each of which must be observed in order to remain free in America. While libertarians demonstrate a high degree of individual adaptability to the diminishing quality of freedom, it has proven true many times over that none of these principles can be safely violated. For long. The price is harassment, arrest, even confinement. To live free means to be able to control your own life and to avoid violence or the threat of violence by others. What you do will almost always determine whether or not freedom will be yours. But you must take the responsibility for your own freedom. No one, especially the knavish bureaucrats, will do it for you. Here, then, are our four basic principles together with ideas and examples of just how they can best be affected. Principle number one, be inconspicuous. Number one, avoid drawing attention to yourself. Virtually any activity can be interpreted as criminal thanks to the gratuitous profusion of laws. Number two, don't exhibit socially unacceptable behavior publicly. Pigs are programmed to bust anyone who appears suspicious, different from them. And insane asylums, jails, and joints aren't exactly free. Number three, in practice, legality comes to mean much less than outward conventionality, conformity, and thus respectability. Get it? Number four, your appearance, possessions, and actions should always justify your presence on a legitimate conventional basis. This is the best way to avoid suspicion. Number five, if you are stopped and questioned, always be able to give a reasonable explanation of why you are there, where you are from, and where you are going. Smile and be helpful. Number six, a sullen or hostile attitude triggers the cop for a bust, your bust. So go ahead and kill the pigs with kindness. You'll win, brother. Number seven, even perfectly legal behavior can arouse suspicion. Avoid such things as solitary walks late at night. The man finds it easy, even entertaining, to pin stray raps on such suspicious characters. Days and weeks can go by before they decide they've made a mistake. Really. Number eight. Examine your daily habits and eliminate any which might possibly be regarded as peculiar, especially if performed publicly. Number nine. Live in a large city where you can have the protection of anonymity. Avoid the small towns where the only sport is gossip about those people. Your business should be no one else's. Appear to be lower middle class in your standard of living. Don't attract the attention given the very poor or the obviously well off. Number 11. Rent a house or apartment that appears respectable, but no more plush than the average cop can afford. Number 12. If you like to live it up, do it somewhere other than around where you live and work. Mexico and Jamaica are great trips. Number 13. Dress conventionally. Adopt what you perceive as the broad community standard. Don't be black or white, as long as gray has so many shades. Number 14. Be clean and neat, never showy or gaudy. Number 15. Conformity for guys means no beard, long hair, or freaky clothes. Biker threads are out. Number 16. For chicks, no sexy convention flaunting attire such as mini skirts and see-through blouses without underwear. Pigs love to drool over our liberated sisters, and often do more. Number 17. Have conventional answers to common questions. Where you are from, where you work, where your family lives. Number 18. There's less heat in telling plausible lies than encountering with self-righteous silence. The object is to avoid suspicion, so be a reasonable person. Lying is not illegal unless you're under oath or perpetrating a fraud. What's more, it's perfectly moral to lie to someone who asks about things which are none of his business. He is the one who is acting immorally. Remember this. Number 20. Be outwardly quiet and unobtrusive around home. 21. Don't keep noisy dogs, excessive cats, or any other pets which might, because of their nature or their number, 
be of concern to your neighbors or the health department. 22. Don't throw wild parties. Far too many busts come courtesy of tender-eared, blue-nosed, flink-ass neighbors. Pathetic, but true. 23. Don't make crystal, DMT, acid, or nitro in your kitchen. Windowsills are not the best places to cultivate either. 24. Hold your stereo at under 5 decibels late at night. Not everyone mellows out with the stones or the Grateful Dead. 25. Your neighbors are the most dangerous people you know. Include your relatives here, too. They will all snitch without compunction. Calling the cops is a fair sport in towns of all sizes, so don't antagonize. 26. Be superficially nice to your neighbors, but have as little as possible to do with them. Ideally, you don't want them to know anything about you. 27. Never express controversial opinions around home or at work. If you have to preach, do it in another town or state. 28. Change neighbors at least once a year. Move to a different part of town and don't leave a forwarding address. 29. Allusions to going back east, getting drafted, returning to college, etc. can be helpful smokescreens to evading inquisitive landlords. Never let them know where you're really going. 30. J. Edgar Hoover stated many times that fully 90% of all arrests by the FBI are due directly to the helpful cooperation of neighbors and relatives. Need we say more? 31. Should you have school-aged children and not want them to attend public schools, you can A. Find a suitable private school B. Tell neighbors the children are feeble-minded and that you are tutoring them at home C. Tell the inquisitive you are a transient visitor from Mississippi, Virginia, or South Carolina states which have repealed compulsory attendance laws. D. Move every three months or so to prevent rumors from spreading too far. And lastly, E. Keep the children undercover during school hours. 32. Don't take the bus cross-country. Terminals are notorious hangouts for pig informers who appraise bus travelers as, quote, only niggers, spicks, college beatniks, and other commie types, end quote. You'd never believe who said this, but then again, you may very well know. 33. Even if you observe all these precautions, you might still be harassed by criminals, both private and public. Whatever you do, don't blow your cover, and thus lead them to suspect you. Keep your temper, be humble and polite, and refrain from shouting matches and or slugfests. Remember, you are a minority of one. They have the guns and the bars. 34. If you're not content, however, to let vengeance be the Lord's, at least abide by this cardinal rule of guerrilla warfare. Don't let the enemy determine your tactics. Retaliate at a time and place with weapons of your choosing. Principle number two, separate and insulate your basic life activities. 35. Keep your home, job, personal trips, and hobbies well separated, even self-contained. Don't let heat in one area endanger any of the others. How? Read on. 36. Keep the address of where you actually live a well-guarded secret. This is very important. 37. Never carry your actual address on you or in your car. 38. Let only those who are trustworthy and have a genuine need know your actual address. 39. Set up a legal address somewhere else, such as a closet at a friend's house containing some misleading personal effects, books on subjects you have no interest in, and clothes a few sizes away from your own, etc. He can thus point to something if ever questioned. Of course, he has the slightest notion of when you'll be back from India. 40. Use this legal address for all your ID which you plan on using regularly, such as driver's license or state ID, provided also for your employer's records should it be required. 41. If you need a phone, use a phony name. Let only the address to be correct among the facts you are asked to provide. A small cash deposit is a small price for anonymity. 42. Rent your pad under even another name if you wish. 43. Pay your rent in cash and never has your name on it. 44. Receive all your mail at a 24-hour post office. Use your legal address to obtain a box or any friendly address for that matter. Peace of mind is not expecting the fascist to knock at 3 in the morning with or without a warrant. 45. Never sign for registered or certified mail. Tell the postman you have moved. He will then return the letter to the post office and send out a notice to come pick it up at the post office. Again, ignore it. The registered letter from a greedy bill collector or professional snooper will go back to the sender, unclaimed and undeliverable. You can't be reached. The snooper won't know your address either. 46. Instead of a post office box, you can employ a mail forwarding service. They will cooperate fully in your efforts to keep a good distance between you and anyone else, whatever your reasons. 
Most newspapers carry their ads in the personal classifieds. With two or more services, you can have your mail routed in and out of the country, each mailing under a different name. Houdini never had it so easy. 47. For people and bill collectors you want to lose, provide a forwarding address out of the country. You can arrange to have letters mailed from foreign countries, stating that you have no intention of ever returning. If they are to creditors, tell them to write you off and save the collection expense. 48. Another ruse for covering tracks is to write deceased on the face of any incoming mail. Drop unopened into public boxes. 49. Any activity which might attract unfavorable attention, such as writing, nude photography, erotic sculpture, etc., should be done under a gnome de plume. Provide a separate address for any such names. Post office boxes are fine. 50. Avoid being fingerprinted. Don't apply for civil service jobs. The FBI would like to have everyone fingerprinted so they can control individual lives. Truly the mark of the beast when you think about it. 51. Stay out of the armed forces. Here, again, fingerprinting labels you forever with the only method of positive identification. 52. Don't apply for security clearances or seek employment in firms which routinely fingerprint. 53. Don't take part in mass demonstrations or dissident activities which might lead to arrests. Fingerprinting would surely follow. 54. The thumbprint requested but not required by California for its driver's license does not go to the FBI. It is used only in cases of suspected identity. Decline to give your print, however, on the grounds that it violates your basic religious beliefs or that it's part of the international communist conspiracy. Look at the bureaucrats straight in the eyes with this one. After a quick paranoid glance over your left shoulder. 55. Keep your name out of public records such as business licenses, permits, tax accounts. Operate under another name or use another person as a front. 56. Always subscribe to magazines and newspapers under a phony name. Pay with money orders. 57. Likewise, always order merchandise by mail under an alias. Just good form, folks. 58. Never order utility services in your real name. Utility companies are the first watering hole for skip tracers. 59. Own real estate under either a cooperative relative's name or a fictitious one. 60. If you have to vote, use your legal address. Just make sure you don't live there. 61. Vehicle registrations, like real estate, are much safer in another name. No heat here so long as the taxes and fees are paid. 62. Try to do without a checking or savings account unless it's set up under a solid alias. This means obtaining a legitimate social security number, and unless you know what you're doing, you're inviting a lot of heat. By far the best methods for creating legal ID are all outlined in careful detail in the paper trip from Eden Press, 595 by mail. With this kind of ID, you can do anything you like under your new name, which you might find difficult or impossible under your old name. A worthy investment indeed. Principle number three, respect the anonymity of other libertarians. 63. Protect the names, addresses, and telephone numbers of fellow libertarians. Use a code of your own making to disguise the actual names and numbers. Keep in a safe place. Try to avoid carrying this coded address book with you. Pigs always flash on such items and so-called rings are busted this way. A smart thing to do would be to carry a dummy book of names and numbers selected at random from the phone book. 65. This practice protects you too in as much as suspicion is cast on you should some of your friends be busted and their names appear in your book. 66. It's also a bummer if your friends get picked up because of your carelessness. They tend not to be friends anymore. 67. Don't engage in illegal activity on other people's property without their express consent. Save the grass and skin scenes for your own home orgy. 68. Don't ask questions which intrude on the privacy of others. Ask general questions, not specific. One might not want you to know where he works, but wouldn't mind telling you his occupation. 69. Adopt the attitude that personal information such as your school background, national origin, interests, politics, family income, etc., etc., are no one's business but your own. And stick to it. Snooping will thereby become so difficult that suspicion will be cast on the snooper rather than on you. 70. When faced with such an inquisitive person, have prepared a set of standard answers which you can deliver without discomfort or concern. But if the person is really obnoxious, give him some out-and-out -out lies which, when reported in the right places, will make him look more like the ass he is. 71. Get around creating public records of your financial transactions. As mentioned above, avoid using personal checks. For large amounts, use money orders. 
put phony names and addresses on them, or write illegibly. If you are mailing the money order, include a note which gives the correct information. 72. Don't request receipts unless the amount is large. Make them intelligible only to the parties involved. Remember, cash still has no names on it, which is why Big Brother can hardly wait for the day of the cashless society. Caution. Most banks have well-established policies for recording serial numbers of large denomination bills whenever they are deposited or withdrawn in large amounts. 73. Payment of taxes of all kinds should be largely a matter of personal convictions. The debate among libertarians alone is endless, so only a few generally observed practices will be mentioned here. 74. The basic rule in which even the IRS concurs is pay only what you are liable for. This means taking advantage of any and all loopholes to the fullest with the ultimate aim of paying no tax whatsoever. Remember, too, however, that several federal joints have rather distinguished populations of tax-evading accountants, attorneys, businessmen, and politicians. If avoiding personal income tax is your goal, both state and federal, by all means, study well or seek competent advice. 75. Sales and use taxes can often be avoided by buying consumer items through personal channels such as friends, bazaars, swap meets, classified want ads, bartering, and business exchanges. Out-of-state mail order purchases are exempt from local taxes. 76. Selective non-payment of taxes, such as refusing to pay that portion of your tax which would ordinarily go for unacceptable social purposes, like war, foreign military aid, CIA, big industry subsidies, narcs, FBI spies, ad nauseum, has become increasingly acceptable and feasible thanks to the rise of numerous organizations which have established recognized trust funds with your otherwise tax dollars. This field is wide open as the courts have done virtually nothing due to the endless complications of class action, non-payment tax cases. 77. Sharp practices, such as claiming 10 or 12 dependents to reduce the weekly bite of withholding, or making a deal with your employer to be paid in cash, which a great many do willingly, are ways of lessening, even eliminating your tax, but can't be recommended if you plan on remaining in the same job for over a year or so, or if you don't wish to live with a solid alias. 78. A compromise in the above dilemma is to maintain a minimal tax profile, but plan on earning the bulk of your income through non-recorded means, say odd jobs for cash. Lead a straight life for the tax vultures, but live underground with another trade and or name. Number 79. In seeking employment, you are usually asked for former job references. If you know that some of them will be negative, don't list them. For the resulting gaps in your employment history have already made up the names and addresses of your former employers. They could be local or out of state, in which case they probably won't be verified except by mail. Of course, you'll be prepared for this by listing a mail forward services address as that of your former employer. Merely pay the first month's fee and notify the service of your code name, a company. You will then be able to rewrite your own employment history. Oh, happy day! Gaps can also be covered by using attendance at school or travel abroad as alternatives to negative job references. 80. For local job references, a good trick is to ask or pay a businessman's secretary to give all the goody information right over the telephone. Provide the phone number on the application, naturally, but remember that the number may very well be verified first by a call to information. When it checks out, your application will appear quite honest, won't it? 81. Personal references on either employment or credit applications are a laugh. They are virtually never verified. Provide them, of course, but feel no compunction whatever in lifting random names and assumed relationships right from the phone book. A locally known doctor or minister is a safe bet, too. 82. For credit references, bear in mind that outfits like big department stores and most credit unions will not give out information to anyone on one of their customers or members' accounts. This means you can use any number of these references with impunity when applying for credit, as the lender will not be able to verify one way or the other if your application is true, a fact he will definitely not tell you. A complete guide, by the way, to establishing and obtaining credit and credit cards is included in the paper trip. Principle 4. Create an alternative identity. 83. A solid set of ID and another name is what can truly be called freedom insurance. With the growing threat of arrest and prosecution for leading a free life, it's plainly comforting to have the option to cut and run, even if you choose not to. 84. Obtaining alternate IDs should be done before you get into trouble. Take the time to do it right. In an emergency, many other matters will compete for your time. In the future, first-class ID may become more difficult to obtain, too. 85. The best ID to obtain is obviously that which is issued directly by government agencies themselves. Using forged, stolen, or totally fake ID is a bust in itself. Needless to say, a number of mail order firms do offer ID cards and blanks for sale, but the chances of your being able to lead an undetected alternate life with such phony papers are slim indeed. 
They can get you into a bar, but they won't get you a passport. 86. With legal ID, you will find no trouble in doing many tasks which would otherwise prove impossible or extremely difficult at best. Also, with legal ID, the risk of detection is reduced to a minimum when and if you choose to disappear. 87. With government ID, you can effectively erase the curse of a jail or prison record. Tens of thousands of free Americans carry with them the permanent label of felon or ex-con. The real crime begins only after a person leaves the joint. Legal and social ostracism continue all their lives. What better reason to disappear? 88. If you had the misfortune to receive a less than honorable discharge from the armed forces, thousands do so annually, the acquisition and use of an alternate identity will be your first step in beginning to live free. You've already lost most, if not all, your GI benefits, but at least you'll be able to get a decent job. Now, watch out for fingerprinting, however. Big Brother has your prints and will be only too happy to prove you're one of those dirty, rotten, commie rat flink deserters. And you thought honest criminals had it bad. 89. Using a legal identity is another way of covering up a bad employment record, too, particularly if the law was involved in some adverse way, theft, embezzlement, etc. In some occupational circles, the word gets around. Fast. 90. Men of draft age have used an alternate ID to escape what they consider the illegal obligation of fighting in a moral war. They've gone to Canada and later come back as someone else. 91. By obtaining the required documents, you can even change citizenship. People like James Earl Ray and Clifford Irvings could have covered their tracks permanently had they only known a few basics of alternate ID. 92. Many have made a regular practice of beating creditors and collection agencies through the adroit use of aliases and legal alternate ID. They are living proof that debts belong to yesterday. Financially, they live quite free today. 93. A quick way up the occupational ladder is to combine mail order school diplomas, certificates, and degrees with expert ID. Not only can a clean break with the past be affected, but a sharp increase in income as well. The only limit here is your imagination and desire. 94. Some of the sharpest operators create an ID as a physician or clergyman and rake in commercial discounts as well as hundreds of free offers and special deals once their names get on preferred mailing lists. Such ID can be of great benefit socially, too. 95. Alternate ID is the quickest way to starting all over in the credit world. The most atrocious credit record is gone forever when your old name disappears. This is an oversimplification, certainly, but what else can you say when you aren't you anymore? 96. Once some form of commercial credit is established, the obtaining of bank credit cards, oil company cards, and travel and entertainment cards is almost automatic if a few solid rules are observed. These are all detailed in the paper trip. 97. Related to alternate ID are the uses of handwriting, physical disguises, and cosmetology as they underline and support the believability of a new person. The paper trip covers all these subjects as well. 98. The ultimate technique and the most basic necessity for initiating the creation of legal alternate identity is obtaining a very special type of birth certificate directly from the government itself. Until now, only the cleverest of international espionage agents have known and used this method, but now, the details are analyzed in full in the paper trip. This method so far surpasses any other in effectiveness, as to make anything less an absolute waste of time, to say nothing of your peace of mind. 99. From this unique method, flow all the beauties of obtaining any other ID you need directly from the government, too. Paper Trip spells out a step-by-step -step sequence for acquiring a complete package of freedom-giving alternate ID, from driver's licenses to passports. Whatever you need, it's there, completely described and explained. 100. Finally, to assure your successful disappearance and continued ability to live free, you owe it to yourself to purchase the Paper Trip. While this has been but a brief attempt to introduce you to the concept of living free, Paper Trip is a master guide and unequaled source of underground information for actually doing so. Do it today. Now. You've just heard 100 Ways to Disappear and Live Free, originally published in Eden Press in 1972. Please check out all of their books, including The Paper Trip, at EdenPress.com. And to find this list in full or to view the show notes, please visit vanupodcast.com forward slash 86.